Well, this week will mark an important day in our nation's history that saved freedom. This Thursday, we will remember the 75th anniversary of D-Day. And so all week long, First Coast News is live from Normandy. Our very own Jeannie Blaylock and Lou Turner are in France ahead of the 75th anniversary. Yes, we're here at St. Mary Glee, we'll explain why in a minute, but look at all this. I mean, the reenactors here, they're everywhere. Hey guys. And before these nice folks leave, I, I got to show you something. This is the most darling little girl. It's Lily. Hi, Lily. She's got a paratrooper here. That figures into why we're here today. And they don't speak English. We had our French is, is non-existent. No. Nope. But look at this. You can see just Gabriel. symbolic. We don't need Gabriel. words. Gabriel. Gabriel. Gabriel and Lily. Because look at that American flag, a salute, a respect to what the Americans helped do. To <laughs> liberate France on D-Day. Thank you, merci. Merci. Yes, merci, merci. merci. <laughs> we've we've at least cute? got that part done. Yeah, we actually right? do. So thank you very, very cool. So this town is, is wonderful. It is um, really famous for the paratrooper aspect of it, Jeannie. You know, the 82nd Airborne drove oh, into yeah, this thank you. community. Oh, oh. Thank you. <laughs> Daddy just wanted to make sure that we stay in touch here. <laughs> but you're right, this is all about paratroopers here at St. Mary Glees. Yeah. The 82nd jumped in and more or less liberated the town. And I think that's why you get such a sense of appreciation uh, here for the United States. That's right, because they needed to get the Germans out. Paratroopers, a lot of them didn't hit their mark, mm -hmm. but it didn't matter. They persevered and they succeeded here. And you know, D-Day 2 is about recognizing people with local connections. Mm -hmm. And I would say the most famous D-Day veteran from the Jacksonville area is a man named Harold Baumgarten. And I talked with the National World War II Museum in New Orleans all about him and his watch. Fascinating story. Hal Baumgarten was among the first soldiers to storm Omaha Beach. And when Steven Spielberg made the movie Saving Private Ryan, he followed Baumgarten's account for the opening scenes of the movie. 30 seconds! Got me with you! Hal was, was wounded three times on D-Day uh, and wounded two more times the, the following day. Uh, and had to endure 23 surgeries to, to repair his shattered body. Larry DeCouris is curator at the National World War II Museum in New Orleans. The museum actually has Baumgarten's watch. He wore this watch through the entire battle on D-Day, and it never stopped ticking. The watch band made by his good friend, and the two ran into each other on Omaha Beach. Uh, they had to cross 300 yards of open beach before they got to to a, with an area they called the shingle, which provided a little cover from direct enemy fire. And uh, that's that's where he ran into his friend who made the watch band for him, and he had, he had been shot through the head and he was dead. Years later, in this segment for the World War II Foundation, Bob Garten spoke about losing his buddies. It's sad, I still, when I go to Dog Green Sector, I can picture all the bodies laying there, and I know exactly where each man got killed. Bob Garten dedicated his life to helping others after the war. He opened up his medical practice in Jacksonville on North Edgewood Avenue. He passed away in 2016. And so we lost Mr. Baumgartner yeah. in uh, 2016. I should say Dr. Baumgartner because he said that he felt as if God spared him on D-Day for two reasons, to have people remember D-Day, to know why it was so important, and also so he could serve humanity. So he opened up a medical practice in Jacksonville. Edgewood, correct? Yeah, on uh, North Edgewood. Unbelievable, and and oftentimes, Jeannie and I have been talking, in fact, he wouldn't accept payment from certain patients mm -hmm. there as well, continuing to give, even in, in that age. It's amazing. Yeah, I mean, that was just his ultimate way to serve, mm -hmm. to say, gee, thank you, I survived D-Day. Certainly. Uh, so another Jacksonville connection. Let's go to Jack's Beach now, a company there, and a man who runs Go Ruck. Jason McCarthy, he led a, a, a cadre here of about a dozen Jacksonville guys and gals storming the beach. Uh, exercise partly and part reverence as well as they get down and dirty and I do my best to chase them around <laughs> Utah Beach uh, coming up a little bit later on First Coast News as well. And you did it. You had a great morning. Yeah. It was cold as ice. I, I had to throw away my <laughs> shoes and my jeans. <laughs> oh, there you but go. other than that, we're going to make it back uh, okay. And coming up tonight at 6 o'clock on First Coast News, oh my, we get to know a little bit more about Tom Rice, 
97 years old. He's going to jump here tomorrow in tandem, connected to a man from Palaka, Art Schaefer. So we'll see you tonight coming up. We are in Normandy for the 75th anniversary of D-Day. Oh, we can't wait to see that. Jeannie Lou, great work out there. And you can continue to follow them on Twitter. They're tweeting all the time about their visit there to Normandy, France. And we also have continuing coverage of the 75th anniversary of D-Day right now on the First Coast News Facebook page as well as firstcoastnews.com. And you can share your photos, your memories of loved ones who fought during D-Day with us. Just use the hashtag D-DayFCN. We would love to hear from here. And they're doing such a good, great job of showing us the atmosphere. I almost yeah. feel like I'm there. Absolutely. With them.